Doesn't look like much in that package, but today we're going to take a look at the MSR Dragonfly Multi-Fuel Backpacking Stove. Alright, starting the video a little later today because I had some Christmas stuff to do this morning. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I wanted to show you this. This is a uh, stove that I was given a long time ago by some people that came to visit. And this was kind of their housewarming present to me. And I thought it was really, really cool of them. And I really haven't used it enough. I used it twice a couple of years ago for a ham radio field day. And then I've used it maybe two other times since then. And because I test so many different stoves and other outdoor gear, stuff like this kind of sits unused. Um, I'm not sure. I think I did a video on this very, very long time ago. And since I have so many new subscribers, I figured I'd recover this one because it's definitely a more expensive stove but one that is absolutely bomb-proof and will last you a lifetime if you take care of it. It even comes with a maintenance kit inside, so if anything breaks, you can fix it right there. So pretty much these are very durable, collapsible mini-fuel stoves. They're good for camping, backpacking, us preppers. Uh, I would suggest lighting them outside because they do require priming and they do tend to, you know, flare up a little bit when you prime them. That's why we're going to be doing this one outside. But uh, these things can burn almost anything. They can burn white gas, kerosene, unleaded auto fuel, diesel fuel, jet fuel, pretty much anything that burns, it'll burn in there. It can bring a cup of water, well, a liter of water in 3.5 minutes to a rolling boil. The dual valves on this, and we'll show you that in a second, the dual valves on this make it very, very easy to get a very, very low simmer. Now, we're not going to do that today because I already had breakfast, so we're just making coffee on this one, <laughs> but uh, I will show you the feature outside and how it works. Let me pull it apart here. Let you know what comes with it. First, you have your fuel can. Now, if you notice on here, there's some tin foil stuff that comes with the stove. That is a ground cover to cover the ground and protect it and from burning and from also you getting your stove all full of water or, so or snow. This is your windscreen. Probably not going to use this stuff today. Um, I don't really have a need to. It's not very windy. It's just very cold out, so this would be a very good test. Gas stoves tend to work very, very cold, very, very well in cold climates and high altitudes. So, let's tear, the, tear it apart. This is going to go inside here. This is your pump and your first valve. And this is the actual stove. Now it is a bit bigger, okay? It's bigger than a lot of those tiny little Lixata type stoves we've been testing. And here's the, the repair kit with all the stuff you'll need, the oil and everything. Um, anything to fix in here, right there, ready to go. So that's pretty much it. There is an instruction manual inside. Now these do run a little bit of money. They're not cheap. I believe the cheapest I've seen them on Amazon is $139. So uh, it's definitely an investment, but it is an investment, and that's my point. Something like this is a long-term investment that will last you a lifetime if you take care of it. So pop out the other control valve here, make sure it's closed. I think I'm going the wrong way. There we go. Okay. Now you will notice this end here. This end is supposed to be lubricated. I'm just going to put a little bit of light lubricant on there, but first we're going to show you how to do this. This is just your fuel bottle. I just filled this up a couple days ago because I wanted to do this video. You got your fuel in there. I'm just using uh, Coleman white gas today. So you got to put this in weird. You see the end here. Drop that in and then drop that in. Once you do it, you're good to go. Once you figure it out. You'll sit there for a while going, how the heck am I supposed to get this thing in here? <laughs> but believe me, it'll come to you. All right, we'll make sure that's closed. We're not pumping this yet. We're not opening that yet. This is also a neat feature of this. Now, you got this tube here. I'm going to put a little oil on it. Just going to take a little three in one. Nothing fancy on this one. Tiny little bit. It doesn't need a lot. I'm going to place that in there. You don't need to do that every time. I just haven't done that in a very long time. You stick it in there. Okay, now you see this hanger here, this clip. It's going to clip right over that. And there you go. That part's set up. Now, some people may get a little concerned that this fuel bottle is very close to the heat. That's what your heat shield is for if you feel it's too close. Um, it's never really been an issue with me, but uh, you can separate it. You can kind of turn this down a bit, lift this up on a rock maybe to give it a little height away from everything. We'll try that out outside, being that I've never tried it before. Now, your next step for this is to pump this about 20 times with everything closed off. You want to make sure, and this is a good way to test it too. 
We're going to pump it about 20 times. There. And once that's done, we're going to take it outside, and I'm going to show you how to prime it. Once you pump this, and once you get it primed, and it kind of works like a Savea 123, a little, little uh, fuel down in the fuel cup down there. Light it, and it will burn, burn, burn. And that's why we're doing it outside, because it does tend to get very high. Um, and then, you'll slowly turn on the gas, and you're good to go. So let's bring it outside, and uh, get it fired up. Alright, so I got it pumped up enough. Once it's pumped up, we're going to hit this button right here, this little knob. We're going to open this all the way. We can regulate that later and get the flame nice and low between the two and get a low simmer on it. But we want to start off with that. Then we're going to turn this on just to at least some fuel in there. There we go. I don't know if you saw that pop in there. There. Now we're going to light it and let it prime. There we go. Alright, so we're going to let that burn. It'll burn for a little bit. You notice how I have this up on a rock in a little bit away. I did bend that a little straight. And I put this up on a rock. So if you're concerned about it getting too hot near it, you'll probably be alright just by sticking it over here. Now something else too. You'll notice there's a bit of a wick down in here. That's to soak up the, uh, the fuel. You don't necessarily need to do that. It is handy if some of that spills onto it and then you can light it right through here. But I just really light it from the top when I've used it in the past. So let's give it a few minutes to heat up and burn out. And then, once I think it's ready, I'll bring you back and we'll fire it up. Alright, should be ready. It's all burned out. And it'll be a little, a little rickety at first there. You hear a little... <laughs> but there you go. Now you can't probably can't see the flame, because it's very bright out here today. Although it's cold out here. <laughs> But, there you go. Now, if you wanted to regulate that and make it a little lower, I could take this valve here and this valve here, and between the two of them, kind of cut off the fuel a little bit. See how I cut it down here? And cut off the fuel a little bit, and change between the two. But we want to boil today. So I'm going to take my Stanley coffee press here, and stick it up on top of that. Make sure I got it all the way up. See how long that takes to boil. All right, so we're almost at a rolling boil. It's very loud. First thing I'm going to do, let me just check this. Yeah, we got stuff coming up. It's coffee, so I don't want it too hot. You can see in there. That's good enough for me. That's about four cups, and it's taking about seven and a half minutes. So it's really not horrible, but uh, it's a lot more coffee than I'm used to. A lot more water than I'm used to boiling. So we're going to close this off first. Let that run out, everything that's in the chamber. Okay, then we're going to close this guy down. And then that's it. Now one of the nice things about this is it's got such a broad base that I can pick this up and it's not even hot. That's not hot at all. So we let that cool off while I put in some coffee here. Make sure I'm in camera. And I'm going to use the Stanley Press. I got this recently and I've been using it a lot because um, it's great for a couple of quick cups of coffee. When you don't want to start up your uh, your drip coffee maker, but yeah, that's one of the reasons I like this thing is it works very well in high altitudes and cold. And when I go up to uh, Mount Charleston up there, up that way, <laughs> um, it works up there great. And the bottle doesn't freeze up, you know, unlike your propane bottles and your uh, isobutane will freeze up on you. This won't. This will work great at the higher altitude, and uh, it's got such a broad base. It's really cool if you get a bigger pan. I mean, you can almost cook with a full-size pan on this. I've actually used this once in my house when we lost power. We have an electric stove. So, really worked out pretty well. So, let me press this coffee, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so I got it in there. I let it sit for a little bit. Um, if you guys are interested in picking this up, it is in my um, store. One of the things I like about it, too, is it doesn't give you a bunch of grounds. Some of these coffee presses, no matter how careful you are, you'll still have coffee full of grounds. So, I'm going to let that sit and uh, steep a little bit longer. I'm going to bring the stove back inside and give you some final measurements and weight and all the whole deal on that. And uh, where you can pick one up yourself. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Really simple to use. Um, doesn't really require 
too much work when it comes to priming. It primes itself very easily. That's the only thing I'll tell you though, is when it's priming, it can get the flames can get very, very high. And if you haven't shut this fully off or this fully off when you're priming it, really this one mostly, um, gas can heat up and seep out and you can get a real runaway. And you gotta be careful. So I always suggest you start this outside. And heck, I'd leave it outside myself. Um, I have used it inside, didn't kill me, but still, I have very high ceilings in my kitchen and nothing hanging down from them, so wouldn't be the end of the world. But um, all in all, it's a very simple stove to use. The base is what I really like because you can use full-size pots, and that makes it good for emergency preparedness. If you don't have a bunch of camping cook pots, you're just going to use your regular pots and pans in an emergency. You can cook them right on top here. Um, I don't think it's been five minutes since I brought it in. And already I can put my hands here and it's not hot at all. That's still a little warm, but that's good because we'll show you how to take it apart. Uh, open, this thing weighs uh, 14 ounces without the bottle. Um, the bottle, again, is going to add weight to it, especially if it's full of fuel. It measures 10.5 by 7.4. Collapse is 3.5 inches by 3.5 by 6.5. And all in all, it's really cool. It comes with a three-year warranty and it's made in the USA. So you really can't beat it. Let me get my coffee out of the way here. And I'll show you how to take it apart. First thing you're going to do is unhook this hinge here. Make sure that's closed. Unhook it. And just pull it out. There you go. And it's done. That simple. Um, you're going to turn this open. You might have some pressure in there still. I had a little hiss there. I resisted the urge to say nice hiss. <laughs> and you'll see there's a little bit of fuel on my hands. So you want to be careful when doing this. Bring it up, and just roll it out like that. You probably want to shake it off a little bit. I don't do that for here. I'm not worried about it. And there you go. You'll put your cap back on. And depending on how cool this stove has gotten, I'll show you how to fold it. This part here folds up against it like that. This folds up like that so you can put it in your bag. And these just fold to the side. I always look like a collector on camera when I'm trying to do something. <laughs> so there you go. That's how you're going to pack it in your in your uh, in your MSR bag. In this bag right here. I am going to let that cool off a little more because this is still kind of hot and touchy down here. I don't want to get it melting the bag. But that's really it. That's you know beginning and end of it. Uh, it is kind of heavy. You know, it's not a light stove. And remember, you're going to be carrying fuel for it. So plan accordingly. You can get smaller fuel bottles. MSR and a bunch of Chinese knockoff companies make smaller fuel bottles for these. I would stick with the MSR stuff. If you're going to buy something and use something that's American made, stick with it. Um, especially when you're dealing with pressures and stuff like that, I just stick with the American made stuff. So you can get smaller ones than this. They're about half the size. And I just keep the heat shield and stuff wrapped on there with some rubber bands. Um, I don't use it all that often. As you can tell, it's really not windy today, so I didn't need it. But uh, that's it. That is the MSR Dragonfly multi-fuel backpacking stove. Like I said, they're not cheap. They run about $139, but that's something that's going to last you a lifetime right there. And they sell replacement parts out the yin-yang. It's very easy to work on. Um, not a difficult stove to work on. You may have to clean it a little bit if you're using, you know, unleaded auto fuel or diesel or something like that. You may have to get in there and clean out the, uh, the jet, but uh, there's tons of tools for it in there already. So you're really set to go. They even do have a needle that goes in there and cleans it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will leave a link down below where you can pick this up at, um, in Amazon. The link I saw there was 139 It's not, you know, it's again, it's not cheap, but it will last you a very long time. And it is something that I would suggest if you live in a higher or colder altitude to definitely get. Um, your little isobutane stoves aren't going to work well in the cold. That's going to freeze up. And I know some people think to put the butane can, isobutane can upside down and it will help it. It does a little, but... This will run in pretty much any temperature. And I mean, what are we out today? 38? It's not really cold, but this thing was the same temperature I brought it out that I brought it in. Absolutely no temperature change. You know, there wasn't frost forming on it like the one-pound propane bottles. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, there's a link down below to that. Don't forget to check out our Amazon store. Um, you can click those links, shop as you normally would. You don't even have to buy anything in the store. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost a thing to do. Um, don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link down below. I should have a Thrive video coming pretty soon. Um, new stuff that I've picked up. So don't forget to check that out. You may want to start getting interested in uh, storing up some freeze-dried food, which, of course, something like this would be awesome for. <laughs>
heating up your uh, water to uh, rehydrate your freeze-dried food. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.